Kings Automotive Enthusiast. Today we have for you a Holy Grail. <laughs> no, I mean, it's considered by some a Holy Grail car, uh, but uh, this here is a 1974 Porsche Carrera, 911 Carrera. This is a real ducktail Carrera, uh, only made 518 of these cars. Let's do a little walk around here while we talk about the car. Um, this car is an amazing car. It's four owners from new, uh, fully documented history, numbers matching Porsche certified car. Uh, it's got 53,000 miles on it now. Uh, had 51 when I picked it up <laughs> and uh, actually been really enjoying and driving this car. But uh, this car's uh, no accident, clean title, um, just an amazing specimen here in guards red uh, obviously five-speed manual transmission this has the 2.7 liter uh, magnesium flat horizontally opposed six cylinder uh, stock horsepower i believe was right at about 175 horse uh it doesn't sound like a lot but the car curb weight of this car is only about 2300 pounds so quite an amazing uh little machine here um this car Basically, it's kind of the same car as the 73 Carrera RS, um, which was like a homologation special car. Uh, the 73 was an amazing car because what they did was, it was basically like Porsche's first kind of like factory race car. And so they had to make 500 of them to make them legal for certain classes of racing. And uh, the 73 was so popular that the first 500 sold out. They made a second run of 500 and then a third run of 500. So there's actually more 73 RSs than there are 74 Carreras. Uh, 518 Carrera coupes in, in 74. So what's interesting is in 74 is when the uh, government mandated five mile an hour crash bumpers. And uh, so, you know, a lot of the purists love the original design. A uh, uh, top of the line uh, 73 uh, Carrera RS brings nearly a million dollars. Um, so this car, just for the uh, sake of the uh, bumpers and a few other minor things, is uh, amazing, amazing bargain in value. Um, and personally, I think the G-body car here from 74 to 89 is just a fantastic looking car. I think the uh, integration of the five mile an hour bumpers is really fantastic. Everybody loves the long hood 911s, but you know, I, I might be the unpopular opinion or maybe I'm biased, but the way the hood sticks out past the fenders on it looks a little different, you know? And I mean, they're beautiful cars, don't get me wrong, but uh, I really think that uh, this body style. It's just an iconic, you know, I mean, I grew up, I mean, this is the car of the 80s, you know, when they came out with the 930 turbos and, you know, and then in the 80s, you know, the 911 was just such an icon. And uh, this car is a bucket list dream car of mine. It uh, actually, what's interesting is, you know, a 930 turbo was, uh, you know, kind of like my holy my personal holy grail Porsche, but uh, after driving this car, the, the sounds, the normal, normally aspirated, um, you know, throttle response and uh, the lightweight and just the simplicity and the pureness of this uh, early Carrera. Um, you know, if somebody offered to trade me an equally conditioned 930 straight across, I don't know that I would do it. Uh, I'm really, really impressed with this car. I actually drove to Nashville, Tennessee with my, I, I'm sorry, flew to Nashville, Tennessee with my wife, Becky, and we drove this car back. We came back through uh, Arkansas, uh, stayed over in Eureka Springs, drove on the Prig, Pig Trail, um, and uh, just absolutely had a ball. On this car, some things that you'll note, uh, you know, the original Carrera did have the 15 inch Fuchs wheels, uh, somebody did upgrade this to the 16 inch. Um, I'd like to find a set of 15 inch and actually have both. The great thing about the 16s are, you know, you've got a much better uh, selection of tire. Um, so the handling and the performance and the tire selection is much better. I just put brand new Michelin Pilot Sports on this car. And uh, honestly, it's absolutely perfectly dialed in for this car. Uh, I just would like to have a set of the Original Fuchs, just because this is original Carrera, 
and uh, would like to, you know, showcase the car, you know, take it and be able to show it kind of in its original form. Um, that being said, uh, the car is, is an original car, uh, interior is original, the, uh, the paint on this car, uh, about 10 years ago the car was repainted. Uh, the values of these cars 10 years ago are nothing near what they are today, so it was kind of just a used Porsche. And uh, so it did get a repaint. It's not a Concours paint job by any means, and we'll show you all the flaws and imperfections. But honestly, in my book, um, you know, the, the condition of the car uh, is perfect because I can take it out and I can drive it and I can enjoy it and not be worried about a little scratch or a little rock chip or something like that. Um, just absolutely love the way the ducktail looks on these Carreras. Uh, it was actually kind of the first time that they actually widened the uh, body. So this is a wide, kind of the first wide body Porsche. They flared the fenders out on the car uh, because it had wider uh, wheels than the standard 911S. And uh, so it gave it, you know, they gave it a wider wheel arch to be able to fit bigger tires in and then also too for racing so they could put larger race tires uh, underneath the car. Um, this car also, uh, just about 5,000 miles ago, had a complete uh, engine and transmission overhaul and uh, done by a famed uh, Porsche race mechanic and it is completely documented with photographs and paperwork and everything. So not only is this a very, very nice 50,000 mile car, it is completely uh, refreshed motor and transmission and drives accordingly. Uh, it's amazing when you jump in this car, considering it's a 74 model car, how well it actually does drive. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty mind boggling. The steering is just amazing. The uh, throttle response of the engine and the sounds and all that stuff, it's just, I would call it intoxicating. Well, let's uh, cut, zoom in here a little bit and take a look at the details and, uh, and imperfections of the car. So we do have the original H1 headlights here, um, which is nice, definitely, uh, you know, they got the, the nicer headlight than the standard sealed beam headlight. Um, looking across the front here, we do have the Volantz down low, got a little bit of uh, warpage, I guess you might call it, you know, probably from a few little scrapes and uh, doinks here and there, but it, uh, it is in very, very nice shape. Uh, a few little scratches on the Volantz, a little paint scratch right there. That's just some water from the car wash there. Underneath this car, and we will do an underneath uh, view of this car also but it is in immaculate condition underneath the car. This car has pretty much zero rust to it. Uh, all the lights, impact strips, fillers and stuff are in excellent condition. Coming across the hood here. Now what you'll see in the hood is it should show up in the lights. You see those little shiny speckles? Well, it's just some little speckles in the paint. Um, not speckles, but basically kind of like bumps in the paint and then they kind of show up the lighting makes them show up under certain lighting but you know so i don't know that's basically when it got painted something you know uh, not prepped right in the paint i don't think it's really trash in the paint not sure exactly what causes that but the, it's kind of like a little mini blistering of the paint you might call it but the car really, really looks nice. The car shines well. And you'll see those little speckles over the over most of the paint, mostly up front here. So, like I said, I'm not sure exactly what causes that, but that is there in the paint. We did have a paint correction done uh, by uh, Van Gogh guys down here and uh, did a really nice job of making it shine. Uh, it was a little, you know, just lots of, it was kind of dull and hazy when I got it a little bit. Um, not super dull, but, but definitely uh, brought a nice, smooth, glossy shine to the car, which I'm very, very happy about. Uh, one thing here, the Carrera has only got a left side mirror, and this mirror should be uh, basically raw, um, you know, like a um, metal finish, right? Like a bright work metal finish. Uh, the previous owner, they kind of did 
they kind of basically did kind of an update on the car. You know, they went with the 16 inch uh, Fuchs with the black centers and the uh, original one would have had the polished spokes. And uh, so they kind of did a little bit of an update, but I kind of want to, uh, thinking about putting it back to original look. Um, boy, it sure does look good this way though. So <laughs> either way is, is definitely, uh, definitely very nice. The, uh, all the sheet metal on this car is in super nice condition. No dents in it. There is a little along the bottom edge of this door. Looks like somebody opened the door and kind of put a little indention in. Uh, must've, uh, I'm not sure what they hit, but kind of dented the bottom edge of the door inward. But, uh, again, maybe another 10 years from now, uh, strip this car down and, you know, I mean, <laughs> this car's going to probably double in value in the next 10 years and uh probably strip it down and and give it a concours paint job at that time but right now it is a wonderful driver the antenna here we got the manual antenna mast um it uh this uh uh section of the telescoping is kind of stuck right now i got some wd-40 on it trying to free it up so it does all go up and down but this section uh is stuck so that's as far as it will go down there uh windshield is in really really good condition has some minor scratches minor pitting but very very serviceable you'll see down in here in the drip rails and you can kind of see where there's a little bit of orange peel uh where they didn't uh really get down in there and polish you know deep down in the edges you'll kind of see that as i go along there you can kind of see up at the top right of the screen some of that orange peeling but again just part of the character of the car. Okay, pan back here and let you see the roof. A couple of little imperfections in the paint there. Not sure if it'll focus on that. Yeah, so you can kind of see some of that. You're kind of trying to get that light reflection around where the imperfection is. Uh, just a couple there, but overall, you kind of stand back and uh, has a really, really nice look to it. Absolutely love it. And this car does have the black trim, which I think looks really, really nice. Looks real subdued on the car versus the bright work trim. Looking across the back window, this car has lots of nice, nice options. It does have the heated back window. It does have power windows. Uh, it has the uh, leatherette uh, vinyl sport seats. I guess we'll go ahead and cover the interior once we get in there. I did talk to you about the wheels here. Let's kind of go and zoom in on them. Like I said, brand new Michelin Pilot Sports, only about a couple weeks old. And the wheels, here, let's get kind of get close and go around the wheel here since we're talking about a Porsche here. We want to get very, very detailed. All right, let's take a look at the back one there. quarter panel here there is some little crows kind of like a crow's foot checking here a few little if you can kind of see it there kind of got to get just in the right light but you'll see some kind of little um, looks like a little chicken foot 
or something. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. But just some, you know, again, some minor imperfections there. Zooming back out. Rubbers are really nice on the car. Bumpers, super nice. Lights are in really good condition. There's the tail light. Got a little dip right there on the lower bumper of a Lance. Does have an aftermarket exhaust on it that sounds fantastic. What's interesting is 74 is the last year for the metal um, grill cover. So that's kind of cool. They went plastic after this. Got the 2.7 call out there for the magnesium 2.7 engine. Carrera call out on the deck lid. Also another interesting thing here, 74 only does have the narrow bumperettes. They're about a third bigger in 75. So, which don't look as good. So very desirable um, looking there. And then we've got our Porsche center finish panel. There is a chip, a uh, little piece of missing. You only see it, so you don't really see it there. You only see it when you're looking down at a certain angle there, you see that. But uh, again, there's our bumper overriders, bullet bullets, whatever you want to call them, in excellent pristine condition. Coming around here to the right tail light. And we're looking good on the right tail light. A little scratch in the paint there. There's the little accordion impact deal there. And then here's the exhaust here. Check it out. Dang's exhaust system. I think that's a very popular. And there's underneath the car. Look how nice that looks. When they did this motor, they did it right. All new fasteners and hardware. I mean, it looks like it came from the factory. Like I said, we will get it up on a lift and show it there. Right quarter looks pretty nice. Doesn't have as much of the imperfection as, it, as the pass driver's side. The deck lid looks really good. No real imperfections in the deck lid. Again, looking at the drip rails. And we'll also give you another angle on the roof here. Glass is in really, really nice shape. The handles, yeah. this car is smooth. No door dings, absolutely beautiful. Little view of the pan there. What I'll probably do is we'll take, and take pictures and put uh, in the gallery also all the pictures of the underside. Here is the rim. This is brand new Michelin Pilot Sports. My favorite tire. I love it because they got a really compliant sidewall and a really soft compound. I think it's a two I don't know, 240, 260, 280 tread wear, so perfect for the street. Uh, really, really soft and sticky, but you know, not like a 200 or under tread wear where you're only gonna get a few thousand miles out of them. These here will get you probably 10,000 miles. And you don't want them to really last any longer than that because then it's gonna heat cycle, there's gonna time cycle out on you on a car that you don't drive that much. One little, I need to roll this little lip right in here. Somehow it looks like I mean, these tires don't rub. This car's never, ever rubbed on me, but something previously caught that little corner of that fender and kind of made it roll out there. But we're gonna take a little bit of piece of PVC pipe and roll, roll that back in. Here's the wheels. They said they're in excellent condition. I got some brand new uh, stainless valve cores that I'm gonna be putting in there. So I'll take pictures of the part numbers of the wheels when I do that, when I take them off for that. Again, sheet metal is absolutely gorgeous. Here is our picture of our windshield. Coming back around to the front. All right, the 
let's take a peek on the inside. Let's see how she looks there. Side of this interior. Got the original sport steering wheel. And then here are the sport seats. Super comfortable seats. Uh, Becky, she has a problem with sciatic nerve a lot of times. And a lot of the, even the really nice luxury cars that we drive, she really has problem with that nerve. And what was interesting is when we took that trip back in this car, uh, she never once uh, complained about her hip and her nerve. Got the factory original radio in here, plays perfectly fine. Got our little storage pockets there. Factory two speakers. Here it is. Little tag here. Can I show you that? And here is the VIN sticker. And the ever important 911 and then 44. The 44, I believe, denotes the Carrera. Looking at the sills and everything. The original carpets. Check out our pedals. Everything is consistent. All of the wear, original, like I said, original carpets. The only thing here is. The, uh, one of the previous owners actually owned some sort of high-end clothing company and decided to cover the dash in Alcantara, uh, which is, they did a really, really nice job. But um, eh, when you restore the car, that would probably be something to change back to an original dash. But right now, I mean, it looks really nice and uh, I'm not gonna mess with anything there, but it is just glued on. Um, so when I, here, I'm gonna come up here. So when I pull this back, uh, the glue is still kind of soft, so it potentially could be pulled off and that glue uh, possibly cleaned off, but I don't think I'm going to open that can of worms. Go ahead and lift up the back here with the seats folded down, and you can see everything is in really, really nice shape. And like I said, we'll take detailed pictures when we get into some natural light. There's our visors, our headliner. I mean, just look at the condition of this car unbelievable here look we even got the little original straps there lift that up got a little horse here i need to vacuum up there but uh there is that and then the carpets there's that steering wheel again a little bit of uh just a little bit of roughness on the top there, but really, really nice. I kind of like it, you know, really just authentic feel there. There's the parking brake. Here's our original ball punk radio. All our temperature controls, no AC on this car. 53,000, just turned over 53,000 in it. Had high 51s when I bought it, so. I've been driving and enjoying this car immensely. Let's go around the other side. All right, door panel is excellent condition. I mean, almost immaculate. There's our speaker, little map pocket there, a little bitty nick there. Dr. Vinyl could actually make that go away a little touch up there but it's nothing that i really i mean it's kind of part of the patina of the car honestly there is the passenger side seat beautiful condition and here is the carpets on the passenger side glove box here open that up there's the original the owner's manual. There is little valve stems there, but there's the owner's manual. There's the glove box. Put the camera back in there, we're ready to use. All right, there's the tunnel. The carpets are in excellent condition. I need to probably put a little Velcro in there and kind of tack them up. 
Go ahead and lift up this seat here. Look in here on the passenger side. Here is the passenger rear seat. A little jump seat for just for kids there. Some things that we've done to this car already. Like I said, we put new tires on the car. I uh, put a brand new factory OEM turn signal switch in the car because the bright lights weren't switching. Uh, put a brand new uh, ignition switch in the car. I thought the ignition switch was bad, but actually it was just a electrical connection ground in the engine bay, one of the plugs there to the engine harness. Uh, cleaned and, and uh, treated that and that took care of that. But nonetheless, went ahead and put in a factory Porsche ignition switch. When I got the car, the fuel pump uh, was leaking a little bit of gas where the electrical port fitting goes. So that was about $700, but an OEM factory Porsche fuel pump went back in the car and uh, put brand new little rubber isolators and one of the fuel lines and stuff. Just everything we do to this car, putting it back with original factory Porsche parts. Well, there's kind of the overview. Let's go ahead and take it for a spin. All right, one thing I wanted to show you here from earlier is actually uh, to add this in here, I wanted to show you the cold start on this car. So this is bone, bone cold start. That is from sitting overnight. A little cold blooded there. That flash in there is the parking light, parking brake. There is cold start. Probably about, I don't know, about 50 degrees here and, and shift somewhere there. Maybe a little cooler. The uh, So we have a fast uh, mechanical, fast throttle idle there. Uh, it was working, in the, but now actually the cable fell off or whatever. So it was kind of handy because you could pull it up for a fast idle, but um, so I just got to go in there and, and hook it back up. So that was cold start. And then looking back here, you can see, you know, we just started it. There is absolutely zero smoke on the car. And uh, listen to that tone. Oh man, what a sound. Once it warms up, the idle is dead smooth. That's just a little bit of a lope there when it's cold, getting itself sorted out. All right, we're at full operating temperature now. Listen to that nice little throaty exhaust there. Let's go ahead and give it a couple throttle blips here. So here we're in the engine bay now. Uh, a couple little things here. Like I said, you know, this car, when it was kind of redone, they, you know, a few little things they didn't really pay attention to. We need to get the uh, stickers on the, uh, uh, there's some little emission stickers and stuff here on that. We got a little um, rubber piece that goes right here. Like I said, there's uh, several stickers right there. I'll probably go ahead and, and order those stickers and get those put on. A couple little covers missing. I think there's a little cover that goes there. But if you look in here though, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my light on. All right, got the light on there. Uh, that way we can see a little bit better in here. But yeah, we got all new fuel lines. I mean, just look at this engine in here. And I haven't cleaned it. I haven't even touched this engine bay. Actually, it's dirtier than when I've got it because I've been driving it. And then when you wash it, you know, water kind of comes through the, uh, the little uh, vent there. So look in here, just kind of give you a good look. I think I'm gonna go ahead and have probably a valve adjustment done since it's got, you know, 5,000 or so miles on. Probably be a good idea, you know, probably like a, 
after a break in, some valve adjustments done there. But there she is, there's the green case, which is correct for this uh, model Porsche. There's our engine bay. All right, let's go ahead and pop the front here. Take a look in the front. There's the front crest. I think what I was reading on that Porsche deal is that crest is supposed to be orange and black on a 74. Um, it'd be interesting to uh, note what's original there. All right, so there's a little cover missing here. Um, I haven't done anything underneath the uh, bay here. Uh, you can see the carpet needs a little Velcro there, but anyway, you can kind of see behind it. Um, there's our interstate battery, a few of our parts. We changed the turn signal switch because the high beams weren't working. Let's go ahead and pull this back here and take a look. Under the carpet here. 21 gallon fuel tank on this thing. There again is the VIN number. And there's even a secret VIN number. I'll have to Google and find out. There's another hidden secret VIN number. Got the collapsible spare. I got some little trinkets there I need to pull out of here. Battery's nice and secured down. We'll look at this underneath, but you can kind of see in here that this car is completely original. No crash damage, no damage at all. Put the carpet back down there. And in here is the another tag. Let me see if I can make sure I can get in there and kind of pause. That way you can freeze frame it and read all that data on that. Kind of a cool little cutout in the carpet. There's underneath the bay. Like I said, there is no rust on this car. Look underneath the hood here. Pretty much factory finish. In the, in the bays and everything, and on the undersides of everything is the original finish. They just did a top side uh, refinishing on it. All right, we'll get this thing up here on the lift. All right, we got the Carrera up on the lift here. It's gonna come in here. We got the Dansk exhaust there. And just kind of looking around underneath here. Just kind of show you everywhere underneath this guy. There's the oil holding tank. Here is valve covers. Just look how clean and dry everything is there. There's the exhaust, there's the Guys coming off of that. Alright, here's the other one. Got a car coming out, go ahead and pause. Alright, just had a sweet Camaro pull in here. <laughs> had the uh, Alpine out a little bit ago, go exercise it. Get back to the Carrera here. There's our casing numbers. Exhaust. Looks like collector gaskets there leaking just a little bit. But look underneath it here, look how clean this is. I mean, when they rebuilt this motor, and I've got pictures of everything when this thing's tore completely down and uh, really shows in great detail everything they did here. But yeah, you can see all new fasteners and everything there. A little bit of, little bit of an oil leak right here. Looks like it might be coming from that, coming down from that, possibly. Have to check that out there. All right, here, here's the transmission. All the axle boots are good. Looks like pretty fresh Bilstein shocks there. I doubt those are original. Those are too nice looking, but they've been on there for a while though. All the heat exchangers work, you know, the heater works, blower motor, everything works good in there. Here's our axle boots, everything looks good. Linkage, got a brand new uh, factory Porsche fuel pump. That was about $600 and $700. I went ahead and put the new little uh, grommets on it right there, the little rubber isolators, because um, they were bad. And so it was leaning up against the body and making buzzing noises. Uh, the high pressure hose, we went ahead and put a brand new high pressure hose on, because somebody had, uh, put a regular hose and clamps on it. So we went back. That's exactly how it is from the factory. Got the banjo fitting with barbs. And then, so we got a clamp there and then pressure fitted up there. All right. 
here is the numbers on the gearbox there. And we'll have pictures of the Porsche certificate of authenticity. You know, we'll have all that in the photo gallery. I haven't cleaned this up underneath here. There is a little bit of a uh, little bit of oil seepage here. We'll probably clean it up and see. Actually, there's our culprit right there. That uh, okay, it's coming from that crankcase breather right there. So I don't know what the what do you guys do about that? Put a little catch can or what? But that's the, that's all of this right here. It's just that breather. So maybe we need to vent the uh, crankcase better. Not quite sure what the I have to look into that. I'm sure there's a lot of Porsche experts out there that could probably answer that no problem. Brakes work perfectly. Again, here's our wheels. I don't think I can see the part numbers on the wheels. I'm gonna have to take the wheels off to get the uh, part numbers on it. I don't think I can see those while they're on the car, but I'm putting new valve cores on it. So I will take the wheels off and see if they're original Fuchs or not. Uh, the suspension on this car is so tight and so nice. Here's our sway bar. Carrera's got this sway bar from the factory. It was an optional on the S. So kind of looking around under here, let's just kind of go down each, kind of look up inside the wheel wheel there. You can see this car is absolutely, you know, I could take a little soap and water and a brush and kind of detail it, but you're seeing it, you know, how it is, how it's been driven. Look, all our jack points. Perfect there. Get it back out a little bit. Going along the bottom here. Do, 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 do. All this original underneath coating is all original. Let's kind of zoom back here so you can kind of see the pan from a bird's eye view. Pan is immaculate. Got a little ding and scrape right here on the pan. Probably should uh, put a little coating or something on that just to keep it keep it nice. I mean, stuff that you expect. I mean, this car's <laughs> 1974. I got a whole lot more dings and scratches and bruises in this car. Just zero rust. This car is wonderful. Let me go ahead and kind of pan back here and I'll just do a little pan here for you. The pan of the pan. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back here and do the same thing. Do a pan of the pan. All right, let's kind of go towards the front there. Again, looking inside the wheel wheels, wheel arches, getting up in there in the nitty gritty. Do the same on this side, it's kind of hidden with that uh, reservoir tank there a little bit. All right, go down this rocker. Again, jack points are perfect. All right, look, looking backwards intro. Well, they see really well. Some overspray from the paint job. Kind of unfortunate, but that could probably be cleaned off on the next go around. Let's go look at the other wheel, wheel well real quick. There's our suspension mounts, absolutely perfect. And then looking up here, I mean, you can tell this thing is pristine. 
No collision. One thing I'm gonna do here, see there's the front pan there. Again, a little scratch there. Somebody's probably from a, some idiot putting a jack underneath of it. Uh, some people do some dumb things. I wanna go back here and show you the rear bumper points here. Make sure I covered that. Yeah, no rear collision damage there. And there. So I took a lot of pictures of this too, that that'll be in the picture gallery on the website. So, man, just absolutely gorgeous. Well, that's our underneath tour. All right, we're buckled into the Porsche Carrera. We're gonna go ahead and roll out a shift here. And so what I'm gonna do here, um, I'm driving over to another uh, picture spot where I kind of do some outdoor uh, natural light pictures. And uh, so it's getting a little bit dusk here, so it's kind of a good time. Um, this car here, uh, I definitely, you know, like to warm it up and get some oil temperature in the car before we give it any kind of uh, gas. So what I'm gonna do is kind of chat with you about the car um, on the way to the picture spot and then let it warm up and then uh, do some pictures and then kind of come back into the driving part here and, uh, uh, you know, then get a little bit of the uh, enthusiastic uh, feel of it here and whatnot. So I'm gonna kind of baby it here a little bit first. Um, but yeah, so this car, uh, the 911s. I mean, I graduated in 87. Um, you know, through the 80s, a red 911. That was just, uh, it was just the coolest car I could possibly imagine as a high school kid. I loved reading all of the uh, car and driver and motor trends and all of the car publications when they came out in those time frames. And uh, yeah, just it's just such a, you know, I mean, you know, the, the G body cars, you know, obviously started in uh, 74, but uh, you know, the mid, the mid to late seventies, you know, we really weren't favored on. And it wasn't really cool to come out with the uh, SC uh, in the, I think it was 79, something like that. Um, that they really kind of regained because they had problems with emissions. Luckily, this car is pre-emissions, so it don't get all that thermal reactor and all that. There was some really, Porsche went through a really bad time, you know, 75, 76, 77, 78, but they had to do the thermal reactors and the cars were just thermally baking, cooking the motors, you know? So, um, like I said, luckily this car doesn't suffer from those issues, which is, you know, why this car is so important and why they're such a, a great car. But, um, but then in the 80s, you know, when they come out with the SC, you know, the, uh, uh, they really gained, uh, really picked up, I guess you might say, uh, popularity. And I mean, that's just, I mean, that's just what you see in the 80s is just <laughs> 911s everywhere, every configuration. And uh, then they came out with the Cabriolet, I think in 83, I think. And so, such an icon. It's just, it, even though it's a, I mean, geez, comes from the 60s, you know, but really the car kind of gained icon cultural status in my opinion in the 80s and uh you know when i see this car you know I, that's kind of what it reminds me of um this is my first air cooled uh, 911 that, that uh actually uh, runs i bought a basket case years ago uh just you know bought and sold it you know non-running basket case car but this car here i've had other 911s but like i said my bucket list was a 930 uh turbo but after driving this car um Man, I, this to me is the best of both worlds, you know, because you're getting that beautiful styling, uh, uh, but then you're getting that early car, the essence of the early pure, early 911s. Really, it's kind of peak um, early car, if you want my opinion, because uh, the early, early cars didn't have much power, didn't handle that great. Um, you know, so then it pretty much comes to this car, the 74, you know, or maybe a 75, uh, you know, like an RS or something, but that's a, <clears throat> you know, whole different category of car uh the 3.0 rs is you know unobtainium <clears throat> but um so really this is kind of the to me the the epitome of the early um early early g body cars the um i just love how light it is it's only about 2300 pounds this engine is just i can't wait to be able to 
throttle it up a little bit. Um, <coughs> they pretty much built it to stock specs, uh, other than they did put a hotter cam in it. So, um, so this car is probably putting out, you know, pretty close to European car specs. Even though this car does have the CIS uh, fuel injection, not the mechanical injection, it uh, is definitely putting out uh, good horsepower. Um, the horsepower to weight ratio in this car is fantastic. Um, so this car, like I said, the motor transmission was completely rebuilt, gone through about 5,000 miles ago, or probably six or seven now that I've put a couple, uh, 1,500 miles on it myself. So uh, I got all the pictures, paperwork, documents, all that stuff. So in the picture gallery, we'll you know put all that stuff in there. And you'll be able to dig through all the pictures of all the rebuilds and receipts and Porsche uh, certificate of authenticity and, and all that stuff. So, um, but just a great driving car. Absolutely love it. The uh, but an entirely you other know, here's you know, the stereo here. Small local size all commercials. Uh, we don't need. We need something more period <laughs> anyway uh the only thing like doesn't work the clock doesn't work i'll probably maybe look at getting that fixed but uh everything the car just drives fantastic the brakes are unbelievable suspension is perfect there's not a it's hard to believe you're driving a 74 car and there's not even a rattle or squeak in this car um shifter's great you know it's kind of vague and rubbery but that's if you read it that's pretty much how they were new so it's been fun researching this car and uh you know and learning about the car especially this specific car and uh, yeah there's a lot of quirks on this car that are kind of like <laughs> you know as they were built they had quirks on them and stuff so uh but anyway so we're gonna go ahead and take some pictures here and then uh i'll pick up the video here shortly All right, we got done with our pictures here. Caught some beautiful light. Wait till you see these pictures on the website, EuroAsianAuto.com. Got my life is too short to drive boring cars. Got a little German call out there. Porsche Palooza hat. Let's finish up this test drive here. I'm going to go ahead and crack this window a little bit. Try to let, let some sound in. Here we go. Turn our headlights on. Got the H1 headlights on this car, which is very, very nice. The old sealed beams really didn't do much. All right. One thing is to note, I was watching a uh, Porsche Club video uh, last night on the, the, uh, the they call them the mid-year 911s, the 74 to I think 78. And uh, one thing they talked about, I didn't realize, but the steering wheel in this car is a 74 only sport steering wheel. The three spoke with the really super fat rim on it. You'll see it, well you can kind of see it in the pictures even. And they and it was kind of funny because the guy that was doing the Porsche videos, you know, basically called it out as being like the holy grail vintage Porsche steering wheel. So, so happy yeah, because it feels so good on this car. Um, actually, it had a Magnus Walker steering wheel in it when I bought it, and uh, which was like a sign of only one of 100. And, uh, and it was cool, and then the, the owner had the original steering wheel also, but um, uh, that's kind of an outlaw kind of Porsche. Had a vibe to it, had a distressed feel to it, and I wanted the factory one in here, so I, uh, what I did was uh, uh, my buddy, uh, Hoovy, uh, Tyler Hoovy with Hoovy's Garage, he's got that uh, outlaw. He actually has a 74 Carrera also, and uh, but with a 930 turbo motor in it. And uh, so I gave him that steering wheel, pulled it off this car, gave it to him for Christmas just because it was like, it fit his car better than mine. And I just love the stock wheel here. So, all right, we got uh, got some temperature in. Let's, uh, let's, let's have some fun. A little, little uh, tunnel here.
300 RPM redline on this car. So that's the other thing about this 2.7 engine, that magnesium engine, uh, really derived from the 2.4, but then in, uh, when they made the 2.7, uh, they were able to make it out of magnesium, and then that was the first time that they used uh, Nicosil plating, and uh, so they were able to increase the uh, cylinder bores and lighten the weight. This engine, you know, weighs like 200 pounds less, or, or something like that, than an aluminum engine. So significant uh, weight savings there. Another interesting note about the uh, ducktail spoiler, which is you know original to this car, but um, they did a test. I was reading a Car and Driver article last night, and uh, it actually produced about 200 pounds of downforce at, uh, at 100 miles an hour, and it and it showed neg uh, it showed um, effect uh, from speeds of 30 miles an hour up. So it definitely helped with high speed speed stability with the rear end through the turns because the light rear end and everything. Uh, well, with you know with with the 911s having lift and they would get kind of light. Um, but one interesting side note of that is by adding weight to the rear of the car, it actually unloaded uh, a little more weight off the front. Um, one thing you notice on this car though, is it has that front air dam on it. And so that keeps uh, air out from underneath of the car, so kind of neutralizes it and gives you a good balance on this car. So so uh, I'm not really planning on uh, any super high speed uh, maneuvers with this car, but I mean, this is the kind of car that I definitely want to take to the uh, pig trail and uh, and enjoy it and, and get it out there and use it as it's intended to be used. Let's see if we can get out here. When we drove this car back from Nashville, it was just an absolute dream. I mean, we just kept pinching ourselves, you know, we couldn't believe we were driving this car and uh, and then such a, such a beautiful drive too. Um, you know, it's just such a, a bucket list type of event. A lot of people, you know, they people think I'm crazy. It's like, man, they wouldn't, they would send an enclosed uh, uh, carrier for a car like this, but I don't know, I'm of the school that cars are meant to be driven. Here we go. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> Man, I hate all these stoplights. <laughs> I just want to go. Let's get going here. There we go. Ooh, and the brakes are amazing. Pretty hard pedal feel. It's kind of a little, at first I was like, that's a little bit different, but I think that's just how they are. Right now, and uh, I, I could drive this car 
every day, all day, any day, cross country, anywhere. I mean, this is a car, it's meant to be driven, but you know, it's not one that you just want to daily drive. It's a bit too special for that. But um, I am gonna drive it and enjoy it on, today was a gorgeous day here in Kansas, about 50 degrees. And uh, when I get done with this video, uh, this car is going to dinner with me and the wife and a friend, some friends here. I usually just take it to about six grand. That's about, oh, wow. Oh, man. It's <laughs> amazing. About six grand is all I usually really take it up to. What's interesting, too, is these cars actually have a, um, uh, I think they've got a, me a mechanical rev limiter, whereas the rotor bug it's centrifugal force, and when it gets to re uh, spinning at a certain RPM, it actually is spring-loaded and it breaks contact and breaks up the spark uh, that way. I've never hit the rev limiter on this car, but from what I've uh, studied and read, that's kind of how they uh, monitor the rev limiter. But like I said, I, I I shift six max, usually you know 5800 somewhere. This thing has such great power band; you don't need to wrap it out. It's got such great low-end power. This is a fun little section up here. It's kind of a little sweepy. Drop it down into third here. I love the tacks on these things. They just bounce around. Oh, that, that third gear pull is just wonderful. We got a nice little sweeping S section here. It's happy to do so. I tell you, I really appreciate you guys riding along with us. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed this car. Um, look us up, EuroAsian Auto, uh, on the uh, uh, .com, on the web, EuroAsian Auto on Facebook. Uh, like and subscribe, we appreciate that. Hit the notifications button, and uh, that way, whenever we get a car posted, you'll get a notification immediately, and uh, click like. And, uh, and leave some uh, in the comments there. Let us know what you think of this car in the comments. And uh, as always, have a great day and happy motoring.